Greetings everyone, the Good Sir Knight here, and it's about that time of the year, 2018, our uh, sort of start of the year gear setup. So, we've had a few improvements from last year, most importantly we should be able to get sufficiently more games in, and well, the cry shirt's finally in, so it's not just the cry pants anymore. But yeah, I want to uh, kind of give a quick rundown of the magazine pouches and a lot of things have changed here. So we still got our same old radio, same old tactical tailor radio pouch. As far as the magazine pouches, we've got, uh, let me see, I gotta just stand up on this little stool here. We've got two of the Tactical Tailor Universal Mag Pouches, which as you can see, allows us to carry six mags. We've got uh, two normal sort of like aluminum mags and like four of the more P-Mag types. Aries Amoeba magazines with a little pull tab, so you can go ahead and set those up in advance. Just gonna let it set high, so when you need a mag, you just pop the tab. Mag free, so. Helps the speed. I could fit three in here, they fit a bit tighter, so having a limited mag is kind of like a spacer in between helps out. So yeah, six mags there. This one is technically the 308 slash 762 AK mag pouch. Basically the main difference is instead of elastic, or not elastic, but a Velcro, it has this little push, this little pop tab. So as soon as you pop that free, you have access to three more mags. So I've just got the uh, aluminum type here because they fit a lot better, but honestly, in the future, at some point, if one of these ever become available, I'll probably get a third one of these just to avoid your normal sort of buckle, rattle, and noise and nonsense. The, the uh, Velcro is just more of a personal preference. There, awesome. So, actually, I could lower the camera here. Normal, normal pouches, or patches anyway, just the basic stuff. So, yeah, so a total of nine mags all up on the front, which is a bit more than normal. It's not as bulky as one would perceive. Normally the double stacks are frowned upon and the single stacks are preferred. Not unless you carry like three mags and people usually carry them on the belt line. But yeah, so we got our PPV, uh, PTT, push to talk, for our uh, sword ends. So active protection headset, pick up small noises, all that cool stuff. Great for our shooting range, and they're useful enough for airsoft when the combat is so close and there's no loud pop pop pops going on. That, uh, they're useful to um, hear small movements, fabric rustling about, people on the other side of walls, stuff of that nature. So, moving to our left side, we've had a few improvements. We have two flashback pouches. Again, I believe these ones are tactical tailor, are they? Actually, I can't. I can't see! There's a little tag on there. I think they're tactical tailor. They don't use the uh, little speed malice clips, but they use the normal sort of buckle stuff. And we got two here. These ones have the. Those are the little buckles as well, but these have access to our frag grenades, our little um, cyclone impacts. They fit quite nicely in these, and they actually fit so nicely that I don't mind having them on the side of my plate carrier, as I was generally opposed to with other magazine pouches. These are nice, covered out of the way, quick to access, you can pop this open, and you gotta get the ring to pull it out, but it's there. Not the fastest, but if you're throwing a frag, you generally want people covering you anyway, so. Nice improvement. On our back, we've got our warrior, well, actually, we've got these, uh, I think these are actually tactical tailor grenade pouches as well, but these are mostly empty, and they're mostly to keep my cover button from flying out of place and causing all sorts of nonsensical problems. So we got those. On the back, we've got a warrior salt system, uh, salt pack. I think they call it the, like, modular something or another. But the purpose of that is it's carrying a 77cc at 45,000 psi gas tank. Why? We might be wondering. Well, you see our big upgrade for the year is actually a Polar Star Jack. So we now have a redonkulous amount of firepower because why not? The grenade launcher wasn't enough. Uh, that was on top of it, so I had to reset that. So then moving on to the other side, we've just got our IFAC bleeder pouch, HSGI bleed out, pull out, pop this, pull out, IFAC components. Hopefully we'll never need it, although apparently not too long ago some kid decided to get shot with a real gun during an airsoft game because he mixed up his concealed carry and a toy. Oh, um, yeah, so don't do that. And if it does happen, plates and a bleed out. Hopefully not. Please don't. Please don't kill the sport for everyone. Literally. But yeah, so HSGI IFAC. Good in case. Well, I mean, more of a real military need. Uh, generally, 
So to answer the question why I keep my loadout the way I do is because generally in the event that anything does go completely chaotic, I want to be able to dump out the extra airsoft mags and have the potential of carrying other things, depending on what's going on. The universal mag that would just help because they can carry a wide slew of magazines. So, yay. So, you know, just in case. Train like you fight, fight like you train. Well, I guess that's how the saying goes. But yeah, it helps out. Which is why I'm carrying a ridiculous amount of gear instead of just like three mags and saying let's go. You can do that though, I mean there's no reason not to. But yeah, other than that, off on the waistline, we've got our little Spectre gear belt. We've got our tactical tailor. Again, tactical tailor. Uh, grenade belt, we've only got six grenades on here. I would like to get, these are the Matrix multi-purpose grenades. They got the little hole in the front, filled with BBs, or whatever you want, safely. And... They're out of my line of sight because of the frags and the radio, but I've got a good feel for where they are, even with gloves, it's not a big issue, so this will hold up to 12. I want to get the, these are the short ones. I want to get the longer ones, but they went off sale, although they're finally in stock, but more than I'm willing to pay at the moment, because, you know, kind of Polar Star upgrades aren't the cheapest. Here we have our, uh, was it, Safari Land, Tan Drop Leg, and a Glock 17 holster, which does not have a Glock 17. What we have in here, we have the quick detach plate, so I do have the Glock 18C with the flashlight in this obnoxious holster here. It's the only one that'll hold an 18, although it's designed for a 17, although it doesn't fit perfectly because the slide's slightly different, but the big thing is it sits really high, which means that although I can get this to fit on here, it's going to be rubbing all against the IFAC. Which is going to annoy me to no end, so unless I'm running slick, then I can swap it out. But honestly, um, I want to get a 17, just because it'll A, fit, and B, then stay low and out of the way as a quick backup. On addition, got a little two holes here. We can put upgrade mag pouches or tourniquets here. We already got a tourniquet back here. It's accessible with both hands, as they should be, as the IFAC, so don't need next tournament. Probably put a... Two of the mag pouches they make for it. Keep an extra mag in the front one and a multi-tool in the back one. So, that's that our helmet. It's still the Advanced Combat Helmet Mitch 2000 because it works with the Swordens. We've got our little Surefire light here. Is it disabled? Yeah, it's disabled right now for battery saving reasons. Turn that, boop. And we've got backup lights in the event that we need them. We've got the helmet band going around here, or the goggle band going around here. I did order, they're the cheaper FA, or was it FMA, little tab inserts, so you can cut this and get out of the way so it doesn't wrap around the helmet. That could be an interesting addition. We'll have to see how it works with our camera mount, because the camera mount's kind of a big deal. You could probably mount it in front of the camera without any issue, move the camera back a bit. We do have a second camera on the way. We have a little contour camera. Second one's on the way, we're going to mount it to the gun so we can get uh, better kill shots, a better kill cam sort of going. So we could probably even move this one to the left side so it's out of the way and everything. And mount the kill cam on the right side of the gun. So if I'm looking over the left side of a bunker with the camera on this side, you'll be able to see what's going on. And if we look over the right side, we'll probably be shooting something anyway, so we'll have a gun there to swap between cameras. So all that would be enhanced padding. We've got our important patches on the helmet. Got our American flag, naturally, starts placing forward. Weapons grade waifu patches, two, for the fact that they make awesome patches. A little honor patch here, that's just uh, for the airsoft community. Pretty cool patch, it's nice to receive. We got our Takamine san, guy who makes my patches. Got his little cat face here. Then we've got a patch, with another reason we really want to get rid of this band is so you can probably see the true reason and what we all in airsoft are fighting for. Genetically modified cat girls for domestic ownership. Very, very important. And of course, you've got the main thing from Weapons Grade Waifus. See you, Space Cowboy. Great reference to a great anime. And this, of course, fits over on our head. We put our sword ins underneath here. We pop the sword ins into here. We go, hey, we could do comms now. Just our comm channel from here. And underneath said helmet, well, I mean, on top of the helmet, we've already got our Googles. So we've got our basic ESS night vision Googles. I'm not gonna open them. They got the inserts in place, so I can see. I can fight, if you like. Ugh, fairly odd parents. 
I might put a, uh, they actually sell a little NVG arm, a little black one. Flips up over here, it helps hold your goggles in place. For like, what, 30 bucks on Japanese Amazon, so again, other future upgrades we're looking at, because you know, a Polar Star isn't enough. And of course, outside the sword ends, we got our basic little face guard. Please protect your teeth and face. It's, it's a cheap enough item, and honestly, even just the psychological benefits of knowing you're not going to lose a tooth if you get nicked in the face really helps you play better. And if you are one of those that's like, ah, well, it kills the aesthetic, well, kind of, I mean, when we trained with sim rounds, or, well, actually did a fair deal of training, guess what we were wearing? I'll, they weren't these, per se. They were like normal paintball masks that you can fit goggles under because we have a lot of blind people. Bunch of nerdy pogs. But yeah, so we wore paintball masks for training, so, you know, keep that in mind. We're basically doing training. It doesn't make sense to lose your teeth or not wear full seal eye protection to lose an eye in a game. I mean, there's a kid who fell off a roof a few years ago, so don't be that guy. Protect yourself. Keep yourself safe. I mean, even paintball, they have a mask to protect their teeth, so... Speedball, depending on the type you're playing. But yeah, just be smart. It's not that hard. You don't have to be the super cool kid. So, moving on to our now way too, way too, way too expensive beast of a gun. I need to get the gas and everything set up here, but it's all set up. we got our gas tank out here. Everything's in set. We just got to get the computer set up. The... Fire selector is a little wobbly, and that's because the ball bearing ran away. Like, as soon as I opened it up, there was no ball bearing in there. I looked everywhere, and it's gone. So it doesn't want to latch into place anymore, so... Getting a new ball bearing in Japan is also a super pain in the, uh, the junk, so... We've got our PEC-2 laser and flashlight, as I've shown off in numerous videos. It's got a laser for speed shooting that we will not be using for games, because you will blind someone. And again, safety first, so... Just the light. You just need the light for clearing buildings. And if they do any shooting challenges with like met targets, then you pop out the laser. You get those super quick shots in. Although, how much quick shooting you're going to do with an M203? Questionable. Bushnell red dot, a little lens protector here, basic rail covers, a little backup rear sight, even though the front sight is bunk and there's a laser box on top of it, so probably do away with this. It's not the lightest gun, but that's what you exercise for. You if you're going to carry a heavy gun with a lot of firepower, you're going to need the muscle to back it up, and you're going to lose a lot of speed. Now, with plates and a Mitch ballistic helmet and all the other nonsense I'm carrying, I'm probably not going to be the fastest running around, but as long as I can shoot accurately and stay behind cover pretty well, we should be just fine. As long as I can get this... Uh, it's going to bother me until I get that ball bearing replaced. Although, honestly, it's just going to stay in semi for the most part. I go pop, 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 pop. And with the rare occasion with full auto, 60 rounds per second nonsense. Their pull start jack, our battery's in the back here. Well, not the battery, but the fire control unit. And it's a pretty, well, simple enough. It's everything I like. We've got our, actually, who makes this thing? Like VTAC. We've got our VTAC mansling here, which allows us to keep our weapon secure with the gas connected. Because now if you drop the weapon with the gas hooked up, you're gonna have a bad time, so having the, uh, the sling catch it before it disconnects or something crazy is good. You can also sling this around back here and get access to your firearm. That's nice and tight. Go pop, 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 pop. And look, I can climb ladders and do other things now. And then as soon as you need it, you go, okay, come on, back up, forward, and re-engage. So, I like slings. They're nice, and the hose will stay in place, so. That's our, this is our bad boy. I actually talked to my good buddy, Mr. Fox. Oh, there's our little connector for our uh, future camera. So I talked to my buddy, Mr. Fox. I was like, hey, we should come up with a cool name for this. And we went over a small list and he just, he, we decided on a uh, rain, not a, uh, like the water rain, although that's accurate for the rate of fire, but our E-I-G-N, like the reign of a kingdom. So you go with the uh, night motif. Muy excelente. So, insane firepower. Also, while I had the gun taken apart, I filed the inside of the uh, magwell because, although it's one of those things my magazines would catch whenever I press the button, they wouldn't fall out. So I have it set now to 
drop the mag out of the gun so I can do faster mag changes, which is going to be important if we are using full auto. So, something to keep in mind. Uh, I do love this gun. I've put way too much. You know, originally I wasn't even going to buy this gun from my buddy, I guess we'll call him Tesla Gojira for his YouTube channel. You should check it out, by the way. But I wasn't even, I was initially going to buy this one because I wanted to get one of his Crytax, and I was like, who even makes this? VFC? I don't know anything about VFC. And, you know, I actually came to become my go-to weapon because I wanted a M4, like use M4 mags, move away from my MP5 SD because... Some machine guns are kind of going into their own weird niche place, most of them being replaced by T PDWs, like 5.7, or 5.7s, P90s, and even the MP7. So, all American, nice little stoner rifle. We've got our stickers on here too. Directions to use located on the M203. It's just a cheap little Matrix M203, there's only like a 50 dollar attachment, so if it breaks, we'll buy a new better one. But being plastic, although more fragile, Makes it a bit lighter weight, a bit more controllable, so... Still, a manly, manly man gun. Ugh. So, that's our main load. Actually, what did I cover? Are these the, uh... Oh, who makes it? Um, BSD Tactical? BDS Tactical? Makes a little large dump pouch. A lot of people don't like dump pouches. You're generally going to want to just dump your stuff on the gear, but if you get a lull, if there's some free time, you want to collect your stuff, keep them from getting uh, stolen. Big advantage to these mag pouches is when you're not doing anything, your weapon slung or something, you can stand and you can put your arms in a very judging manner over the top. So if you're like, hey, let's be a character in Rainbow Six Siege, you can stand around like this in your little frame and be like, I'm edgy. <laughs> but anyway, it's, it's comfortable, although it puts a bit more strain on your shoulders. So yeah, we've got all sorts of stuff. we got a tan little cable. The other thing that we have that's nifty is we have a tactical assault gear little uh, personal retention lanyard which is good if you're going to be doing helo ops or vehicle ops or something that you don't want to fall out of now we have this massive carabiner I'm going to try to get this replaced in the near future with a lighter weight more user friendly Kong Tango because this just adds a ton of weight to everything so we'll get that swapped over and it'll be a nice little change but yeah little aesthetic thing. If we do ever go into a helicopter, this will be a must though, so. Yay! And yeah, so, what we're going into 2018 with is a pretty baller gear setup, so. Frags, mags, and handgun. With an extra mag, hopefully, so. We'll get fit block 17 in time. We don't need to be burning through money at a cyclic rate. We can leave that to the Polar Star, so. Hope everyone's doing well this year, and we should be seeing you in February. There should be a few Sundays off to go pew pew and have a good time. So cheers, everyone. I'll see you in the next video, and yeah, stay chivalrous. Take care.